starts up, we'll be finding out where they want to go, you know, what the priorities are going to be for the, the things that's always interesting to see. Are they going to stick with the standard priorities? You know, the things like the Churnwalk, Varia, the Grace, or are they going to go a little bit more unconventional and look to pick up Vision Gaming, run things in the lane that no one else is doing. Things like the Krull in the lane. They've picked up a couple of times over the past few months. And uh, it's that, those things like that are just something you have to keep in the back of your mind at all drafting against them. Oh, you absolutely do, Tasty. But, you know, we've been seeing recently with uh, Hollywood Hammers actually picking up some pretty meta picks as well. You know, we've been seeing a Rome success out of big pause and a lot this uh this season so far here in he lee it's gonna be pretty fascinating to see we actually see a ban right off the bat uh taking that thing away uh, no rona for big pause and it looks like uh now it's to big pause and hammers ban yeah and it's kind of interesting that they go for the rona ban just because that is a one of the heroes the pvp warrior has been able to play exceptionally well but I like the decision to ban it away here because it opens up a whole different way to normally see. Because now, Hammers, they have to choose. Do they want to ban, ban the Varya? Do they even potentially leave both of them open and just trade those two heroes one for one with uh, the side of Division Gaming? There's a lot of different ways this can go. But now, off the board, suddenly the Sky is no longer as much of a priority as it might be otherwise. The Black available as well so there's a lot of things that you now have to think about if you are the side of hollywood hammer the rhyme away that's even more surprising to me just because with rona off the board he's in time and instead it's not going to be neither of these two melee heroes to see fireworks tonight tasty and I, this is a big opportunity the uh pick to vision right now so they have the chance to pick up varia if varia has seen mixed su success in both vis pro and, and the, the he league but there you go we see her picked up and she could go either route either time either time we're gonna see her could be or which we did see all uh, wheel with devastating success mm -hmm. Or she could go CP, use the arc, get out of the of damn Stormforge Spear. But we see an Arden actually picked up now for Hammers. See, re comfort pick go. Is available. Okay, so. Of Vision Gaming, or they don't think Vision Gaming plays Turnwalker at all. If they're going to be leaving this open, the only other alternative I can think of is that they might be con con a carry Arden with a Churnwalker, which it, it could work. It's a little bit unconventional <laughs> to say the least. I would be a fan of it, but we'll have to see if that's the route that they're going to go because the members of uh, Vision Gaming, they're not going to ban the Churnwalker. It wouldn't make sense. Churnwalker be Arden opponents. And with Blackfeather coming through, Churnwalker, Churnwalker, Varia, those are the two top picks in Vainglory right now. This would be amazing for Vision Gaming if they... They're not even going to have nope. Churnwalker go through this draft. Oh. We go through... Yeah, this is crazy sauce right here, Tasty. And picked up next. Then, because that's going to allow or disallow any kind... A lot of... But Cruel is picked up now, and uh, it's more likely than cool, but it's still a flex pick, too. You know, we could have Varia <laughs> go through the jungle. That would if that happened, man. Yeah, I, I don't think that would be the case, but it is to round out this draft. So no Churnwalker in picks or bans. Very surprising to see in our first game. These two teams can... And we got and say the composition you know what they actually picked up but the very much the ordinary we'll see will this varia be able to 
before the side of, of Vision Gaming, but will it be the Black Feather Batiste combo that is able to shut them down? It's going to be Wait, Sean. Oh, tasty. And we are. And it's going to be a really crazy matchup. Success uh, game last week. For who? The Warrior has a tall glass to fill. If standard, but we'll see. Yeah, well, yeah are they going to run it? Well, I would expect Crystal, but again, with this team, if you get as we get onto the fold for game number one, we do see PvP Warrior starting with two weapon blades. So we could very well another with a sort of double weapon composition, or it could even be Cause running a Crystal Kroll scene as well. So you never know what to expect with this team. And starting off a little bit too, middle treant. Every other team starts at their backs and then works their way forward. What they're doing the front small uh, jungle monster, because it's not worth much gold. They don't really care. Over. It's a total of about 50 gold if two members of a team are next to it when it goes down. Something that they're concerned with, waste their time going for that small monster and potentially get invaded the rotation comes to a fruition. So a smart decision there from the side of Vision Gaming. They get their Elder Tree, reset, get the game from ground zero. Not only that, but they did actually port back, pick up some I and uh, we do see boots, actually, tier one boots picked up on the PvP Warrior pretty quickly, and I like that for a lot necessary with Varia. You need to have PvP Warrior getting it, staying on the back big pod by Elim or even have Actually, quite a. You can pop him for some. Just and avoid getting burned. That Varia is just too. Ability is very limited. Yeah, very limited. Until you get a little bit later on, you start throwing around those dash. But it also allows. Even if you were just ducking down to the jungle real quick, he can make that movement and then get back to lane without really missing much in the way of CS. Uh, the boots allow all just that extra movement, the extra rotations. You know, you can rotate down to the shop once four minutes happens a lot quicker than your opponents if they don't have the boots. So you can make those moves that your opposing laner simply cannot afford to do. And I also like that already... Arc recursion. He's already, he already threw out one right there. He didn't throw out the double dash though. He just threw out a single dash. Up okay. that extra barrier and and recharging some of the energy is so important to Varia uh, early game because we we know she uses a lot of her her attacks with those Stormforge spears very very quickly. So re re sustaining a lot of that energy and getting a barrier to to boot is very very useful for PvP Warrior right now. Yeah, Big Paws is doing a great job in this lane thus far. Has a slight CS lead for himself. As a result, about 12 CS right now uh, is a, a pretty sizable advantage for this early in the game. The mitten candy going to be used just to buy him a little bit of extra time to get back to base so he can make his first purchase and immediately is able to pick up a Serpent's Mask. That is a big first item completed for the side of Hollywood Hammers. And that's going to give him a nice advantage in the lane until pvp warrior is able to get to the shop himself big paws will have a very clear item advantage and can win out any trades that might happen oh it's going to be huge tebe uh pvp warrior needs to go ahead and get himself uh that sorrow blade but he's still a few well yeah he's still about a few hundred gold away from it oh actually he has picked it up right now so there you go he's going to be able to uh Fight back a little bit better going up against Big Paws. Yeah, felt, felt like he was a few hundred gold away because we're used to seeing just a single a weapon Sorry, blade to start. Blade. But right. wait, because he had the two weapon blades, it brought the cost down to about 2,500. And so he was able to pick that up on his first shop rotation. You also see Shaded Talent starting with a Crucible instead of the Fountain. So both captains do have their first tier three item. 
but very different tier three items. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Kaz actually getting bullied out of his jungle a bit because Big Paws made the rotation down, but he saw a PvP Warrior took advantage of that time to get some Look solid at Big damage on the turret. Big Paws still trying to harass Kaz away, but with the Crystal Sentry applying a slow and the sustain available to Kaz, actually both of them having quite a bit of sustain, so that's going to be kind of a wash in the jungle. You got to turn your attention back to the lane, see what's going to happen here as Big Paws rotates up. PvP Warrior will be the target. Takes a good chunk of damage, but the Sigil comes down from Lyra, will keep him topped up and in fighting shape. Now with Lyra... We do, yeah, we were, you were talking... Go ahead. I think we might be losing Sean. Yeah, you know, I'm having a little bit of issues with my Discord. If I do, if I do uh, miss... <laughs> Anything you're saying, it's it's because it is cutting out here and there. It doesn't cut out when I speak, but it cuts out when I hear you, which is kind of It odd. cuts out when you anyway, speak, wait, too, don't worry. <laughs> well, here we go. It looks like PvP Warrior is getting bursted down. Yeah, PvP Warrior is going to be the target here. Big Paws, however, gets turned around on. That's the fountain getting used by Chicken. And again, having that first item fountain pays off for Chicken. Obviously, Shaded Talent hasn't needed the Fountain, has been able to do a great job of healing with just the Lyra sustain. This is something that we saw a while back. It was Wrecked, actually, one of the first players to start doing this with Lyra. You already have that heal from the Sigil. You can forego the Fountain for just a little bit of time. And now they're going to be able to try and get these extra movements through due to having that the Crucible you can prevent an ordained. You can prevent the gauntlet when the level six comes out for chicken. There's a lot of things that it can block early on, and it also just gives Lyra a lot of extra health, which makes that he sigil heal for that much more damage or that much more healing. Yeah, especially with the changes that she's actually had to uh, to the way she scales. It, it her HP because of the increase in HP, and that's why we have that crucible picked up for her and she's able to go ahead and do that much much better with her imperial sigils i do like that and big paws too with that serpent's mask you know it's always been a solid pickup for uh, a black feather to to get but now because of the uh, the buffs that serpent's mask has gotten it's it's become even more of a utility and here we go yeah here we go it's gonna be a massive target on big paws he's going down low the fountain will get used keep him alive but PvP Warrior still keeping pressure up. Cause with that Aftershock Kroll, when he goes in, it actually does a surprising amount of damage. The turret is almost down. PvP Warrior is just going to go in, finish that turret off, get that first objective down. Excellent job by Vision to just co constantly put pressure onto that turret. But now they could be in trouble. It's a nice rotation from the side of the Hammers. But there's the Crucible getting used, but it for, requires the portal to get out fully from Shaded Talent. And now with Kaz coming on the backside, the ult from Varya, they're going to find first blood. Vision Gaming setting up that kill excellently, almost baiting Hollywood Hammers into chasing deep down the lane for Kaz to come up from behind. You know, I think Chicken, even though he was the player to watch here at the beginning of the match, I feel like PvP... Poor warrior is going to be the one who's the player to watch right now. Him on this uh, weapon power Varia is, is a great sight to see. Him being able to pop his boots just at the right time. The Crucible getting used to block out that gauntlet. Really on point. Well used by Shaded Talent. And that nets them a turret. And the gold is still pretty even right now, Tebe. We actually have about 500 gold in the lead for Vision Gaming, but uh, First Blood went over to them. Overall, we've had a pretty even game here, one to zero right now with kills at almost nine minutes in. Eliminate did actually pick up, he's picked this up a while ago, he picked up that uh, clockwork and it looks like they're gonna be invading the jungle, trying to even things up with the gold at the moment. But picking up that clockwork because of the changes that it's actually had in the last couple of updates with that extra 60 CP that it has for uh, the, uh, the crystal power, that's made it a really good pickup, especially for the uh, Eliminate here on this Batiste. He can really throw out those ordains, the bad mojos to try to slow down PvP Warrior and lock him in. We haven't seen that much success with him doing that, though, as PvP Warrior has been pretty much unscathed and has actually just netted himself an assist here, but he's just doing a lot of work, a lot of damage, and him being... They're, they're trying to focus him down, I feel, and and I feel like 
Hammers is not having the greatest success. And they're trying to focus on PvP Warrior, but like you mentioned, it's very difficult to because of the amount of sustain that Lyra is able to provide and, of course, the barrier from the arc recursion when it gets used. There's a lot of survivability for the Varya, and Kaz has really been the only one that's been affected by uh, Eliminate's efforts here. You see the CS not as high, but it's a Kroll. You don't expect it. They get themselves a gold mine, but now they've caught Shaded Talent. He will use the portals to get on out. This has split the team, though, and PvP Warrior gets isolated, but as he goes towards the Treant, the rest of the team does not want to commit, and instead Big Paws has gone up underneath the turret, and now PvP Warrior... He's trying to start to turn damage back around. He's going to dash over the wall twice, get underneath the turret to help his team stun onto Big Paws, but they aren't going to find that kill just yet. Hammer's trying to regroup under, away from this turret, but they're taking so much damage. Gauntlet goes down, is going to immediately be dropped. This chicken just has to keep running. Big Paws is incredibly low. The fountain has already been used. He will be able to get away for now, but members of Vision Gaming, they are not looking to let Eliminate and Chicken go unscathed. That will be a lower healing, but Chicken does end up falling. PvP Warrior finds that kill, trying to lose the aggro of the sentry. But meanwhile, Eliminate and Kaz going to run around each other for a bit. PvP Warrior, he is at high risk of getting taken out by the sentry. They finally just give up this chase, not wanting to give a kill over to the Hollywood Hammers, but a great fight by Vision Gaming, and again, PvP Warrior making plays with this Varia. Making plays. Those arc recursions were amazing, Tasty Bacon. He was just going in and out, getting away, staying on the back line, and the damage that he was outputting is just insane. I'm anticipating seeing some really high numbers for him on the Halcyon Elite app. But uh, taking down Chicken 2 was a pretty tall task, as we know that Arden has a pretty high health pool, and he's already got himself an Atlas Pauldron there, Fountain of Renewal, so he's no pushover. But PvP Warrior with his arc recursion, him dashing around and just doing so much damage and sustaining himself, keeping his energy high, and getting barriers to boot has been very, very utilitarian for him. And he he's just been doing such good work here he's already gotten a kill to his name he has a breaking point down in his inventory so that's going to allow him the longer he stays alive in these fights the higher his damage output is going to be and if i'm hollywood hammers right now i i'm feeling like i'm a little bit on the back foot yeah absolutely you have to be feeling like they're on the back foot a bit but they still can feel fairly confident you know it's only two kills have gone against them and they still have only lost one turret despite all the pressure that has been put out by Vision Gaming. So it, this game is far from over. They're starting to get to these tier, these second tier three item power spikes, and you see infusions getting picked up as well. Uh, at least Big Paws picking one up for the side of Hammers. PvP Warrior and Cause they've been infusing uh, for the last couple of minutes uh, there. So no real surprises. They're just going to try and keep those running for as long as they can. But the thing about getting the infusions, if you're the team that is aggressively buying the infusions. Then five allows your opponents to kind of catch back up as far as the item builds are concerned. So uh, obviously with those infusions ticking down almost at half usage for both PvP Warrior and Kaz, they're going to want to try and find something sooner rather than later. Here comes the ultimate from Varya. That's just going to be some nice zoning, maybe a little bit of extra damage if they hit. Not really much going to be coming from it. It is a weapon Varya, so a lot of the times that ultimate is just going to be used to try and get vision of their opponents but you can see Vision, they're trying to force something here. They're trying to get uh, you know, some sustain onto this gold miner. Here comes the fight as that's going to be Big Paws going right on in. Big damage coming through from this Varya, though. Can they find the kills? Big Paws is low. Chicken has not used that fountain yet, however. Lots of utility available. Shaded Talent uses the portal over the wall to get out of trouble. Now they're turning their attention on to Eliminate. Fountain has been used. They find a kill onto Kroll, though. Caused the first one to go down. PvP Warrior with an arc recursion into a portal. is not going to be enough to save him, though. It looked slick, but it just is not going to do the trick. And now that is going to be Hammers looking to chase down Shaded Talent, trying to find this final kill, looking for the ace. Shaded Talent with plenty of healing for himself but underneath this turret. Can he get this trade? No, it's not going to happen. An ace for the Hollywood Hammers. Now how much can they get off of this? That was a very interesting team fight, Tasty Bacon. 
PvP Warrior, he got up to 20 breaking point stacks during the course of that elongated fight. However, because he just wasn't able to... It, we had the fountain that wasn't popped yet for a while by Chicken. The members of Hollywood Hammers were going kind of low at some points, but they were able to really focus and sustain. And there were some tactical errors that were made. We didn't see an arc recursion used to its full effect. He only did one dash one of the times earlier in the fight that I saw. Shaded Talent throwing down that portal there. Uh, we had PvP Warrior take it, and it, it was, oh, here we go. Here's another fight. Yeah, another fight breaking out. They're going to try and get some aggressive moves with the Sentry coming into play, though. Shaded Talent right in the thick of things. He's taken a lot of damage. Still has the Fountain available, but doesn't want to use it just yet. There's the ultimate from Varya again, just to chase members away. It's not going to be doing much damage with this weapon build. But PvP Warrior going in aggressively, seeing what he can find, eliminate... Looks like he could be a target, but they instead turn their attention to Chicken. The Ordained will stop that aggression for now. Big Paws is up in the lane, healing off of these minions so he can rotate down, but they're going to try and isolate him and catch him out of position. That's going to be the portal being used, though, to get to safety. Big Paws rejoining the rest of his team. Nice job by Big Paws to have the wherewithal to just take the portal back away from the gank. That was a very interesting interaction. We actually had the portal there for the potential gank, and then Big Paws took the portal back the other way. As he took it back the other way, the chain lightning from PvP Warrior extended a lot further than it normally does because it had already had locked onto him. I've never seen anything like that happen before. So that was that was very fascinating. <laughs> I'd also like to talk about Eliminate on this Batiste. In game two last week, um, uh, he in their series. We actually, oh, hold on a second. They're going in. Yeah, there's a lot of aggression right now. Hasn't resulted in a lot of kills, but these teams are fighting pretty consistently here, Sean. And right now, Big Paws, he's got to be the target for the side of vision, but you can't put everything into that basket because the Eliminate will just tear through you if you do with that Dragon's Eye stacking up. See, he actually has it up at 9, 10 stacks right now. So if a fight breaks out, he's going to be in a very good position. Doesn't look like Vision Gaming really want to commit to anything. That's going to be a stun onto PvP Warrior, though. He gets out of the gauntlet. That may be enough to keep him alive for now. So it doesn't look like Hammers really want to commit to trying to dive underneath this turret. And that's obviously a wise decision at this point. Varya will get ordained, but the rest of the team is willing to dive in. The portal will result in a stun, but it gets him out to safety. And that's all that really matters at the moment. Lots of poking, lots of harassing. But neither team willing to commit to a fight just yet. Could be getting it soon, but now it looks like Hammers with the ultimate coming out from Varya are just going to back away. Yeah, it's unfortunate that Shaded Talent didn't have any vision. They don't have any scout traps. They didn't have any flares. If they had been flaring that mustache bush, they could have got some extra damage down onto there. But uh, Cause looks like he wants to get aggressive, but uh, Vision Gaming does not want to have that fight at the moment. Uh, you never want to lose... A team fight when the Kraken is up and the Kraken's been up for three minutes now and we haven't really and they are going to be going in hard right now because is the only one they have targeted shaded talent got split from the team but he is going to be able to get out to safety however had to use a, a little bit of his resources had to use that crucible in order to prevent the stuns from coming through so a little bit for the hammers right now and they're looking to just dive underneath this turret they say you know what we don't need a team fight we'll just take the objective chicken going very low however is it going to be enough for a kill that's been the question all game long gauntlet comes down does not find a stun pvp warrior is going to end up falling though to the on point and that's going to leave cause in the thick of things he doesn't have the damage to be able to find turn this fight around instead shaded talent will get one underneath the turret but that's all that he's going to get as the ace comes through Big Paws and eliminate the surviving members. And that is all that Hammers need to go ahead and look to start this Kraken. Big Paws making the plays under turret. They just focused down that tier one turret. And then when PvP Warrior was backing off, he didn't care about the other turret. He just went right under it, threw that on point down, was able to take him out. And once you eliminated PvP Warrior, uh, the Big Paws was able to just do so much work and continue doing so much work. And now it looks like this Kraken is going over to them on the leash here. 19 and a half Three to six kills, not a very high scoring game right now, and about 3,000 gold lead.
four Hollywood Hammers at the moment. And we have some uh, journey boots picked up by Elimin. Him to just continue to uh, keep his mobility up during these team fights. And uh, infusions are actually popped by both Eliminate and Big Paws. So. Apologies for that delay. And it was uh, a tech issue causing a bit of a crash on us, but we are going to be back now and getting this game underway once again. The game was paused so that you missed as little action as possible. However, you did unfortunately miss out on a huge turning point. The Kraken push from Vision or from the Hollywood Hammers was stopped after it got to, into the base of Vision Gaming. And Vision Gaming has just won a team fight, getting a very quick ace after immediately taking down Big Paws. They got Big Paws low and then threw a From Hell's Heart that stunned up Chicken so he couldn't actually use any of his resources to help heal Big Paws. Vision Gaming was able to take down the Black Feather, turned it into a quick ace, and are about to be going for the Kraken as soon as we get the game unpaused. Yeah, pretty good summary of what happened, Tasty. Uh, it was a pretty dang good bunch of series of events. Team fights, that the, the, that previous team fight that occurred. Hashtag not rigged for Vision Gaming because they, they are coming out here and they're doing really well. What he can here, staying alive on this weapon power of Aria. And once we uh, get back into the game, we're going to see where this this Kraken push takes them. They are down uh, to their last two Vein Crystal turrets, and we have four turrets up for Hollywood Hammer. So this is definitely going to net them pretty good, sizable amount of objectives once they're able to push into Hollywood Hammer's base. We'll see how the rest of the game unfolds. We are 23 minutes, 5 seconds into game one here. Of Vision versus Hollywood Hammers. Yeah, and obviously Vision are going to get this Kraken uncontested. It's going to be a matter of how much they can push with stuff. If they win one more team fight, this game is over. 